With us are Suzette Henry Newton and Krista Lazar, students at USAT that are going to share their experience with us today. Tell us why you went to this program and what led you to go into this field of medicine. Well, it's been an odyssey for many years. Um, I wanted to be a doctor when I was a child just because it's a great thing to be to help people and I got the dream got deferred. Um, I'm a child of a single mother and she could not afford it. So I went into nursing and as working as a nurse in the inner city, I saw a lot of death, a lot of dying, especially when you, um, you became a nurse in the middle of um, the AIDS crisis in um, the Bronx, New York, Brooklyn, New York. Um, so I then became funeral director. I said, well, if I'm going to help patients, I'm even going to help them when they are deceased. I always wanted to be a doctor. Why? Because I always wanted to help people. I think it's important to be my brother's keeper, to help people along. And I think that's a part of my personality, to lend a hand to someone who's down. And within my family, we're a family of nurses. My mother's a nurse, my aunt is a nurse, all my aunts are nurses. Um, so it was the field to go into, but I always wanted to be a doctor. I wanted to help um, people on a different level. Um, I came close to being a doctor years ago, and um, I got sick. And as a nurse, when you get sick, you get scared because you're like, oh, Lord, I have to put my trust in, in my fellow man. And at that point, being in the hospital bed and seeing what patients go through, experiencing, my, experiencing it myself, changed my perception altogether. I want to be the physician that sits by your bedside. I want to be the person who holds your hands. And USAT gives me that opportunity with the schedule that I carry at this time, being a full-time mom of three little ones and also working as a nurse. USAT gives me the time to do it at my pace to get the work completed and still be able to one day be a doctor to help people to administer medicine. Do you have a specific modality that you intend to follow? Yes, I want to be an emergency room nurse, doctor. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be an emergency room doctor. Um, I haven't narrowed it down completely, but emergency room or I want to be a psychiatrist. Oh, well, those are very Two different yeah, fields. Yeah, far between. I love the energy of the emergency room, but I also work with in a long-term care facility dealing with demented patients, and I've fallen in love with them. Mm -hmm. I think um, when you get to that stage where you're dealing with the loss of memory, every day is a new day for them. Mm -hmm. I find it fascinating, and I think that I could help those people also. Well, you have a difference. You have those that are going to have every day is a new day. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have those that fall in love with you and want to marry you and believe that you are their soulmate mm -hmm. and are knocking on the uh, clinic doors after hours yeah. and you see them on your security cameras. So <laughs> 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 and there's, there's a lot it takes to go into psychiatric care. Yes. I think that I'm up for the, the job. I think that um, this part of medicine opened my mind to all the possibilities, all the modalities that can be used. We don't have to use only um, pharmaceuticals. There's a lot of holistic medicine when it comes to that. You're area. speaking to my heart. <laughs> I believe that every doctor should know about the holistic side of things. It's incredibly so important. Krista, tell us about you. What brought you here? Um, from a young age um, as well, I was just, I love people um, and I've always loved to watch surgeries on TV since I was age of seven. I did a lot of volunteering at my grandparents' nursing home when I was in middle school and I just saw a lot of suffering and people dying of illnesses, chronic illnesses. And I remember being very young and saying, I wish I could help these people and have the knowledge to understand their disease process and understand how to help them. So that kind of fueled my energy and my passion for medicine. 
Um, I then went on to be a dental assistant for a couple years, and then I went to um, PA school, and I entered into the um, surgery um, specialties, so cardiac surgery, GYN surgery, and urology. And I thought, you know what, I need to understand more. So I discovered USAT, and um, it's just been a wonderful opportunity for me. Uh, I've, the professors we have have such a deep understanding of medicine and have given us such a great education um, because they do integrate the holistic side um, of medicine as well. So in our studies, we, we understand vitamins, you know, a lot of things that a lot of medical students today don't learn about nutrition or have a limited scope of nutrition in their education. When a lot of actual medical causes could be brought upon by someone taking too many supplements. Right. An overload of supplements. Overload or nutritional deficiencies, either one. This is something that's incorporated into our curriculum and that we understand on a molecular level and the biochemistry of it. So that definitely makes our medical school unique. Um, and then we're really helping people and treating the root cause of some of these disease processes. Right. So that's something I'm very excited about. What modality are you choosing? Um, I'd actually like to go into um, a wellness center. I want to be, I want to, I hope, I want to do a family medicine. Just come work for me. <laughs> residency. <laughs> that would be wonderful. Um, because working especially in cardiac surgery, I see all these disease processes that could have been prevented. Um, I'm looking at clogged arteries all day. Right. And I think to myself, if these people had the knowledge years ago on how to prevent this and be proactive in their health, they wouldn't be here on the table today getting heart surgery. You know what I've learned, Krista? What's that? They all know. They all know about the diet. It's a choice. Mm. Some people say, I'm going to live it fast and I'm going to live it hard. Mm. And with no regrets, mm -hmm. those are the people that you see on the table. Yes, that's true. And then you get the others that say, I'm going to live it right and I'm going to live it well. We can sometimes pull those fast people out and awaken them. Mm -hmm. A lot of times they awaken after surgery and they change their life. Mm -hmm. But there's those few that are never going to change anything. That's very true. That's very true. So, and then I do see that population who say to me, I wish I had known um, how to eat better, make better choices. You know, my grandmother always made us the mashed potatoes with a stick of butter and, mm -hmm. you know, the fried chicken. And that's just what I learned to eat all my life. So, um, but you're right. You have such a vast population of people with different um, motivation and different reasons why they become ill. So you do have those who make a choice to live the unhealthy lifestyle even though they know that this is the result. Right. So you but, get those ones with the wake-up call. Those mm -hmm. are the ones we have to say, let us hold your hand and go there. Mm -hmm. And just provide the support for them as well. I think that a lot of patients don't have support um, from healthcare providers in general. I mean, we need to kind of educate them and say, we care about you and let's be proactive in your health together and not just here's a list of things that you need to do and good luck. Mm -hmm. So keeping them accountable and being by their side throughout the process I think is very, is a key element of their care, so. It's amazing to me how many patients that we have come in that are suffering symptoms of diabetes or low blood sugar that they've created issues in their pancreas because they're doing the raw food juicing. Mm -hmm. And I have to explain to them, you can add all the greens you want. Those greens are great for your body. You can have a spinach shake, a kale shake, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. But as soon as you start adding a whole apple and 10 strawberries and an orange and all these things, your body is not meant to process that much sugar. And people think it's not sugar because it's natural. Mm -hmm it's still sugar. Mm -hmm. It's still going to hit the body and raise the blood sugar immediately. I know this as I had a diabetic son who was mm -hmm. diagnosed at four. Mm -hmm. I know how these things react. Mm -hmm. And I watch my patients that are creating diabetes 
later in life because their pancreas is getting worn out. They're juicing three, four times a day because they can only worry about their weight. Mm. It's really important that we stress to them. They think they're doing something healthy. Right. They come in with this badge uh, uh, that they carry, I'm healthy, and they don't realize that they're actually destroying their body with a fad. Yeah, it's, a, it's true. You see it You see it a lot now, and you're, you're right. It's really, um, it's just accelerated over the last couple of years because people want to do the right thing. Those people really do have the heart that they want to change their diet, but they don't know how to. Mm -hmm. So that's where they're running into trouble. As a visiting nurse, because I did visits in the home, some, some of us as clinicians also cause a problem by not being educated ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, that's the difference with having Dr. Tolp teach us about nutrition. Because as a visiting nurse, I would go and tell my patients, oh, do, do not eat this carbohydrate, that carbohydrate. Eat fruits, eat as much fruits as possible. Mm -hmm. But then when you come and you have a class that you sat about nutrition, you realize, yes, juicing is kind of, it's going to bring up fructose, it's going to make your sugar go off. Right. Then we can bring it back to our patients and talk to them about it. Talking about changing their, their pantry, about um, what they're eating, the canned stuff. Coming down south from New York, I thought that I'll be seeing farms with people eating directly from the farms, not knowing that they'll be going more to the supermarket and getting all of these starches to eat, canned food to eat. So the teaching that's occurring in the community from um, that's going on now when I teach them is absolutely different. Right. Absolutely different. It's a because changing environment, landscape across fully. Mm -hmm. People are learning so much every day. Mm -hmm. got to make sure that we provide them the right information. Sure. I'm so happy you guys are learning all these things under one roof, mm -hmm. USAT. Thank you. Thank you. I really look forward to the days when you guys are out there treating people and bringing them the knowledge that you got at this terrific school. We do Thank too. <laughs>